All right, I am a startup company and I just made a pretty big sale, like the biggest sale that I have and I just sold it to a, uh, a, a distributor in France, right? And so they are, and we agreed on their contract and we said, all right, you're going to pay me 3.9 million euros, okay? And so we're on net 30 terms, so they're going to be paying me that 3.9 million euros in 30 days, okay? This is my largest sale I've had yet. So am I going to want to hedge this risk? Do I want to be speculating in foreign exchange markets? Not really, okay? Because I want to lock in how much I'm going to pay, okay? Now, let's say that my, uh, my, my spot rate, okay? My current spot rate is $1.39 per euro, okay? This is the current spot rate, the the rate that I'm looking at today, okay? But I also want to look at and I want to see what the uh, the forward rate is going to be, right? So I call up my investment banker and they tell me that the forward rate, the 30-day forward rate is 1.40, okay? So what am I gonna do here, right? I don't wanna to have to take a risk, I wanna lock in my payment. Uh, even though um, this rate is different, is that I'm going to lock this in with the forward rate, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 3 million euros, I'm gonna multiply it by my exchange rate, the 1.40 dollars per euro, and that tells me that I will have 4.2 million dollars coming in, okay? So I have an account receivable essentially 4.2 million dollars, and that's what my payment's going to be. Now, just to illustrate why we might want to do this, is that we're just going to say, hey, what's going to happen if I just wait for the spot, okay? If I wait to exchange and I just want to change at the market rate, at the rate in 30 days, okay? I'm just going to go out into the market, I'm just going to buy them, okay? If we end up with a point, we're going to have two examples here. Let's say that our spot rate ends up jumping up to $145 per euro, or it goes down to say 135, right? These are two examples here. All right, our first example, example A, is it goes up to $145 per euro, okay? So what we're gonna have here is that we'll multiply that rate by my 3 million euros, and that means that I would end up receiving $4.35 million. And it's like, all right, look at that. I'm at, that's actually that's actually greater than 4.2 million. That's not, that's not bad, right? I'll, I'll make some more money. Great, I'm speculating, okay? But then on the other hand, what happens if the rate actually goes down, right? What happens if the dollar appreciates, becomes more valuable, okay? So what we'll end up with then is we'll end up with, we have to multiply here by the 3 million euros, and we'll end up with $4.05 million, okay? Which is less than we would have received up here. Right, we now have $150,000 less. Right, we're now out $150,000. Okay, it's $150,000 below $150,000 above. So that's a $300,000 swing. I am a startup company. Okay, I don't have the ability to take on this risk. Right, some companies might might be able to handle this risk, but I mean, this is really risky. I mean, that $150,000 might make the difference between having you know, hiring more people or, you know, being able to pay my suppliers, right? That is actually a pretty big deal, okay? So if we wait to see what the spot rate is in 30 days, that fluctuation can change, okay? Now, the company that I'm starting here is we're in the business of making goods, okay? We're not in the business of speculating. There's plenty of other people out there that are speculators, okay? And a speculator would actually work on you know, trying to figure out and make money off of changes in the rates, okay? So I hope this makes things a little bit, a little bit clearer about why we want to hedge risks.